What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to go over relationship fields in Payload CMS. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notifications for whenever I drop a new video. Now let's dive in. In two of my previous videos, we've gone over many of the fields available to us in Payload CMS. Some of these are data fields that store data in your database, and others are presentational fields that simply help you organize your admin panel but don't save data to your database. We've talked about the main fields you'll use in most projects, a few layout fields that help you organize and group your data, and now we'll round off all this talk about payload CMS fields with relationship fields. There are three fields that I'd like to discuss in this video. Relationship, upload, and join. The relationship and upload fields are data fields, while the join field is a presentational field. These fields could be considered what I call a main field, but each of these fields is more involved than the main fields we already discussed. So it makes sense to group these in their own video. So we'll get started with relationship fields. The relationship field allows you to relate documents together. A good example of this is to have an author field within a post collection. You can have a collection of blog authors, then using a relationship field in your blog entry, assign that author to their respective blog post. So let's take a look at that. We're going to create a new field here in my payload config, and we'll do type of relationship. Now here we're gonna need a relation to field, and we're gonna provide a slug that tells payload CMS what collection this relationship is being formed on. So I'll just select users because it's available and then give it a name option of author. And so when I launch my payload app and then go to blogs and click into any blog, I can come down here and I now see an author select field. When I click on this, I can see which users are available to me where I can select and then save them. In order to render the relationship on the front end, you may need to adjust the depth at which you are querying your database. Typically, a depth of one will be enough, but if you're only seeing an ID when you request a relationship from your database, you'll want to increase the depth. The name and type options are required when configuring the relationship field, which we just saw. The new field that we just introduced, relation to, is also required. You can provide there the slug of a collection to this field to link that collection, like authors, just like we did, to the collection you're adding this option to, like the blog collection. This field looks and operates similarly to the select field. First, it looks exactly the same as a select field. It also gives you the ability to have multiple options using the has many configuration option. So if we had more than one user, we could set has many to true which would allow us to select more than one user. It even shares an admin configuration option. You're able to set is sortable to true to enable drag and drop reordering of the relationships. And you can do that by going to admin, is sortable, and setting that to true. This is true by default, so really you would be setting this to be false if you did not want the ability to drag and drop reorder the relationships. Other admin config options include allow create, allow edit, and sort options. Allow create allows you to control if you want to allow the creation of documents in the related collection without leaving your current window. So as it is now, if we go over to our blog post, we are able, with this little plus button here, to create a new user if we'd like to. If we don't want to allow that behavior, we can set allow create to be false. And so when we do that, and go over to our blog post, there's no way to now create a new author. So if we get rid of that, and we want to erase the ability to allow editing, we can set allow edit to false. And now if we go over to our blog post, we're no longer able to edit this author from this window. But if we remove that, we're able to see this little edit icon here at the end of author that would allow us to edit this specific user. Lastly, sort options lets you use a string or object to set a default sorting configuration for the relationship. Since we only have one author or one user in this relationship, 
setting sort options won't do anything here. You also have the option to filter what is returned in the relationship field using a query, a function, or Boolean. To do this, we need to set a function in our filter options that take relation to data and sibling data as arguments. So we can do that by just entering in filter options, and then setting up a function and allowing the arguments data, sibling data, and ID to be used. And here we're just gonna return true, so everything is returned. So to see this in action, let's actually build this out a little bit. So we are going to add to our users a new attribute. So a new field we'll call an active checkbox. So we'll do name, active, and we'll set the type to be checkbox. And by default, we will set this to be false. So when this checkbox gets created, it won't automatically check the box. So we can go here and we can look at our author value through the allow edit, and we can see that active is not checked. So now if we want this author field to only return active users, we can do this by doing a conditional lookup where we're going to look at if relation to, which is also an available argument, is equal to users, we can then return a where query where active equals true. And so when we do that and go back to our blog posts, we can click on author and see that nothing is available. But if we go over to our users collection and set this user to be active and go back to our blog posts, we should see the author here now. Now we can move on to the upload field. The upload field is another data field and is similar to the relationship field in that it requires another collection to be provided in order for the field to work. This field can be used to provide an image to a section or to deliver assets like a PDF. Like the relationship field, the upload field requires the name, type, and relation to options. So here we can add another field where we're going to include type upload, and we'll do name of upload. And we have a media collection as part of how the payload project was created. And so we're going to say that this is going to be a relation to media. And so we can save this and then we'll see an upload field be created here where you can then create a new file or choose from an existing file if there are any in your project. Unlike the relationship field, you'll need to go to your collection and opt in to uploads by setting the collection upload config option to true. We'll dig more into that in a later video when we go over collections. There are no admin configuration options outside of the generic admin options that we'll discuss in a later video, but you are able to filter the available options you can choose from by using the filter options configuration. Filter options can come in handy when you want to only have one media collection but multiple MIME types like image, audio, video, and PDFs. The last field we'll go over in this video is the join field. The join field is a presentational field, so it will not save data to your database. It simply allows you to send data from the relationship and upload fields in the opposite direction. To use an example from earlier, this allows you to do things like view and edit posts belonging to a certain author. In order to demonstrate how to use this, we're going to go over to our users collection and we're going to create a new field. And while the join field is presentational, it does require a name. So we're going to do name join, do type join. And then we have two new options to think about. The first one is collection. This one's the easier one where we just want to know which collection we want to return on this join field. So we want the post to be returned. And then we have this on option. And the on option is going to be the name of the field that you want this collection to be performed on. So if we go over to our payload config.ts, we can see that we have our relationship field, which needs to exist in this collection for us to be able to access it. And we're gonna look for the name, which is author. And so if we come here and we add author to the on option and refresh, nothing is gonna happen here to the post collection. But if we go over to our users and we look here at this option here, we can see one join is available and we're able to edit it from this collection. You can also see other information included, like the author, the upload, the group, and more other 
fields as well. This field can also simplify how you query relationship data on the front end. While the join field doesn't add data to your database, it does surface related documents using Payloads API, similar to how virtual fields work. This gets extremely powerful and flexible as you use the local API to query your documents. As we already discussed, in order for the join field to work, you need to have an existing relationship or upload field in the collection you're joining. So if you're trying to join your author and post collections in your author collection, you need to have the relationship field configured for authors in your post collection. Lastly, you can use the where option to set a default query to hide related documents from appearing. So here we could do where active equals true, which is not going to change anything here because this is an active author. These relationship fields are extremely flexible and powerful ways to connect your collections. We just scratched the surface for what each of these fields can do. We'll be covering each of these fields in more detail in later videos, so be sure to subscribe to my channel and get notifications so you don't miss an update. See you next time.